My name is Paul Russe Sabagina. I am the house manager of the most luxurious hotel in the capital of Rwanda. A place that my family and I happily called our home. Until the day everything changed. Daddy, there are soldiers on the street. Hi, I'm Grace. And I'm Drake. And we're from the Santa Barbara Middle School Team Press here with... Paul Russe Sabagina. Hi. Muara Mutse. Sorry? Mu Muara Mutse. Oh, Muara Mutse Neza. Amakaru. Amakuru Meza Chane. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Naimiza? Nimeza Chane. Okay. okay. Something? Um, to begin our interview, we would like to hear about what your life was like when, when you were our age. At our school, we ride, we ride bikes a lot. So we brought this bike that might bring back some memories of your childhood. What was a day in your life back when you were 12 or 13? When I was uh, your age, approximately, my hobby was playing soccer, like any African kid. So I was a soccer player until the end of college. And wherever I went to school, I played for my schools. And also, as a young kid like you, I was doing a few other things. I was reading many things about Mandela. I was reading a few things about, about Martin Luther King, about, uh, about Mahatma Gandhi, and many other people. And when I had read the Bible at the age of 13, then you are not very far from there. So I was busy as a young boy of your age. We read that your father is very dear to you and that he told you a story about a wounded lion, a story that has meant a lot to you in your life. Can you tell us this story and how it has played out in your life? That was a message. When my father talked about a lion, he was conveying a message to me and to my brothers and sisters, the message of hospitality, how to welcome any human being, any human being who comes to you. So therefore, in the running culture, even when a lion comes to your house as a guest, you have to welcome this wild animal, which risk even to kill you. So, why if you welcome a lion, why don't you welcome your fellow a human being? So, that was a very strong message from my dad. And my dad taught us also many other lessons. And uh, some of them was how to behave whenever you are faced by a, a very hard, tough situation. When you see people who are close to you, who are fighting, and you are there to, to separate them without being biased from one side or the other. So this is why he would, he would always tell us that if you see two brothers fighting and you are supposed to separate them, stand in the middle. Do not look to either one. Look up and say the truth. He was teaching us when he was young. He was, when I was young, or when we were all of us young, he was giving us so many moral lessons. And I think that also helped us. And this is why I took my father to be one of my heroes. Your name, Paul Rasasabinga, literally means humble one who vanquishes enemies. How can one help person help promote peace? Uh, how can we promote peace? Why do people fight? People normally fight because they fear each other because they do not know, they do not have time to sit down and talk and see the best part of each other. So this is why they fight. So in order to promote peace, we need to promote dialogue, to bring those people together around a table, give them an opportunity 
equal opportunity so that they can have a, kind of a platform and talk, say whatever they want to say, then they come to know each other better. That is when you promote peace through dialogue, through words. Of course, in my nature, I am a fighter. And this is the meaning of my name, as you say. The Gusesa in Kenyarwanda means to disperse. Abagina means enemies. So Rusesa Abagina is he who disperses enemies. But how? With guns? No. Because we have tried with guns since the last many years, but we never succeeded. So, and this is what my foundation, the Hotel Rwanda Rusesa Abagina suggests. It is, we suggest that few people just silence guns and give an opportunity to words, once again, to dialogue. Rwandans believe Rwanda is where God goes to sleep at night. At the, where do you think God was during the genocide? This is a question that we always ask, as we always ask ourselves. In 1994, when the genocide was taking place, we always recalled the, our history. In our history, we used to say that God sleeps in Rwanda. God could wander all over the world, but make sure to come to sleep in Rwanda. Sleeping in Rwanda meant peace. But um, <clears throat> sleeping in Rwanda meant that God was bringing us peace. But in 1994, when we were praying, because when people die, they always remember God. We were always asking ourselves, was, where was God? And asking God, oh God, the Father, Son, the Spirit, how, where have you gone? You have abandoned us. What is going wrong? We were asking ourselves many questions about God. Of course, so far, we are still asking ourselves such questions. We have not yet come up with a solution. Yesterday, you mentioned that there is a soft spot in evil people. How do you find that? I think it is your duty, it is my duty, it is my obligation to see that best, that soft pattern in each and every one. How do we get there? To get there, even if those people are evil, we have to listen to them and try to understand and come down to their ground. The only way to understand someone is to be close to them. As also they say, keep your friends close and your enemy closer so that you can know what is next, so that you can know what they think and how they think and how they do things. So you do not need to push people because it and everyone, as I said and will always repeat, each and everyone on this earth has the best side which can do a lot of good, but also we are most, as human beings, we are more, more or less like a shark, a shark under the waters, which is calm, cool, but at a given, at a given time, it can just jump up and break boats. So before it breaks boats, we need to know how to deal with it. And to deal with it, we have to, deal to, we have to bring it closer, know what this shark thinks how it does it, why it does it. So it is our duty and obligation, once again, to dig in each and every one, get that best part, that best part of the heart. Amahora means peace. We would like to ask you some questions about peace. You recently spoke in DC about women being the best peacemakers. Why do you think that? I think that women, are the mothers. Actually, the mother is someone who has babies. They actually are responsible for the households. 
They are the ones who bring everybody and everything together. And wherever they are, there is always peace. You have noticed that all across the world, wherever there are conflicts, women are many times not involved in those conflicts. So people who are not involved in the conflict, they are the solution. Because the one who are posing, who are causing the conflict, are not the ones who are going to find solutions. The ones who are not involved are the ones who are in a better position to come to me as a part of the conflict and convince me, tell me that, listen, Paul, you are wrong. It is not my opponent who will come to me and tell me that I'm wrong. It is a neutral observer. And women, in almost, almost all the cases, they are those neutral observers who can now see and tell who is right and who is wrong. Both you and the president of Rwanda might be considered wounded lions. I am a young woman and I have brought both of you in and imagine I have brought both of you in the same room to talk. What would be one of the questions you would ask him? Well, uh, uh, to me, it is very simple. If he happens to open his mouth in front of me, well, I think we always come up, we'll always come up with a solution. As I told the students yesterday, whoever comes to you opens his or her mouth and then you talk through dialogue, through words. You always come up with a solution. What would I ask him? The first question I would ask him is why can a head of state, who is, should normally be busy doing the government businesses, dealing with the higher profile people, presidents, why should he focus his speech on a small, single peasant like me? This is not a job of a president. And this is what I told one of uh, the people who came to look for a journalist. A journalist in 1994. One of my guests was a journalist called Kamirindi Thomas who is today a journalist working for the Voice of America in Washington, D.C. Thomas, uh, on April 26, 1994, took a phone called the Radio France International, started to describe how the militias and the then Rwandan army were losing, how we were starving, drinking, swimming pool water, not knowing how long it was going to last. And all of a sudden, before he, the end of his interview, I saw a colonel in charge of security in the capital, the whole of the capital city, coming to look for him. And I just invited him kindly in my office and told him that, sir, this is not your job. It is not the job of a colonel to hunt after dogs. Because he told me, he just shouted loud, loud, when, when he was getting into the main, the hotel main entrance and told me that he's, he's, going to, he's going to pick up that dog. I told him, this, this is not the duty of a colonel. It is, this is a small and dirty job. Let small people do it for you. So even Kagame, President Kagame, this is not his job to hunt after me. But I, as I believe, we, if we happen to meet in a private position, I know we'll understand each other. Because what I say is simply the truth. And Kagame knows what the truth is. 